you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the game where we aim for the obscure and we ignore the obvious. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. I'm Stacey, this is my husband John and we're from Romford. Couple number two. Hi, I'm Linda, this is my husband Barry and we're from Southampton. Couple number three. Hi, my name's Lachlan, this is my friend Woodrow and we're from London. And finally, couple number four. I am Joe. This is my sister Robin. We're from Perthshire in Scotland. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much, all of you. A very warm welcome to Pointless. It's fabulous to have you all here. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. A comedian who once called QI the Champions League of TV shows. But today he's joined the Sunday League for hardcore kickabout. It is my Pointless friend. It's Josh Whittacombe. I have no memory of saying that quote. Uh, you were drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Do you there think QI is the Champions League of... I mean, I, don't... I really... Yeah. Nah, maybe. Yes, it's yes, it, let's say it is. It's not as good as the chase, is it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> just a bit of banter. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> there goes your light. Oh, and your sound. <laughs> dear, oh, no, dear. bit of fun, bit of fun. Pointless is the best one. Thank you very much. Yeah. We can take that <laughs> without even checking our stride. <laughs> you say all you like about that programme. OK. No, I'm even going to call it The Chase. There you are. Oh. The Chase, I can say it. You can say it? Yeah. Whoa! Oh, fair you enough. You say what you like about The Chase. Yeah, no, well, yeah, Bradley Walsh says what he likes about this, doesn't he? So... Yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> is that convincing? <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Oh, now, anyway, back to point this. Mohammed and Abida <laughs> won the jackpot last time, and it was a substantial jackpot, so uh, very, very well done to them. Uh, but it does mean today's jackpot starts off back at £1,000. There we are. Right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. <laughs> Just bear it in mind at all times that the pair with the highest score at the end of each round will be eliminated. That's the rule of pointless. So just remember, therefore, to make sure your scores are as low as you can possibly make them. Best of luck to everybody. Our first category today is... TV settings. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... Fictional British places in television, Josh. OK, on each pass, we're going to give you seven clues to the names of British places seen on television. All of these places are fictional. We've given you their initials, so please name the most obscure places from their descriptions. Thank you very much indeed. I'm already trying to guess what fictional places we might see and might be travelling to on these boards. Let's reveal our first board of seven clues. Here they are. Nurse Charlie Fairhead and D.I. John Keenan have both worked in this city. H. This brightly coloured town on a Scottish island is home to characters such as PC Plum and Josie Jump. B. Dr. Martin Ellingham worked as a GP in this village between 2004 and 2022. P. This English county has been the scene of over 130 murders. M. This seaside resort was well protected by the Home Guard during World War II. W. O. S. Sam Jones works as a community firefighter under Station Officer Steele in this Welsh village, P, and the hub of this London borough is the Queen Vic pub, W. John, Morning. welcome back to Pointless. Thank you. Great to have you with us again. Tell us more about yourself, John. I'm John. I'm married to Stacey. Uh, we have a 14-month-old daughter, Isabella. Isabella, hello. Who's just discovered walking and now has <gasps> discovered running. Yes, suddenly opens up a whole mm. new avenue of parental concerns, indeed, doesn't it? Indeed, indeed. Yeah, She running. spots danger, she spots food, and she's gone. Yeah. Oh, dear, oh, dear, yes. I mean, you still use a, a, a buggy quite a bit, presumably. Uh, we try to. Try to, she yes. She tries to escape all the time. Oh, it's terrifying. Indeed. Really terrifying. Well, good luck with that. Um, now then, what about the board behind me with all uh, these fictional places? They're all I know exciting. A I know a few of them. Mm -hmm. I do enjoy older TV, so mm -hmm. I'll go for the seaside resort protected by the Home Guard as Warmington on Sea. Warmington on Sea, it says, John, let's see how many of our 100 said Warmington on Sea. Warmington on Sea is absolutely right. And down and down and down he goes, 16. That's a great start to the round, John. Well done. Yes. 
Warmington on Sea, which is located on the English Channel coastline. A lot of the location filming was done in Thetford in Norfolk. Yeah. I'd love to have been around for Dad's yeah. Army. Still yeah. good. It's still good. Still good. Still, still good. good. Thank you very much indeed, Josh. Now, Linda, welcome to Point. This is great to have you here. Tell us all about yourself, Linda. I'm Linda. I'm a retired civil servant. I've got four children and four grandchildren. Lovely. What do you like getting up to, Linda? Uh, travel. I love, travel. We love travelling. This is lovely. What's been your most ambitious travelling project? Or holiday, call it what you like. We've been to Antarctica. That's that was, a proper project. Yeah, that was brilliant. Which you do on the deck of a boat, presumably. Yes. Yes. There's not that many places to stop off. Yeah, really. we stopped off. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, every oh, port. Nice. Yeah, we trudged through the snow and... But did you stay on land? No, no. no we stayed no, on the I boat. See. Different yes. port every day. And more penguins more than you've penguins ever seen than in you your could life. shake a stick at. Yes. Don't shake a stick at a penguin. No, don't They don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, there we go. Now, what are you going to go for here, Linda? Well, I know a few. I think I will go for the second one down. Brightly coloured town is Balamori. Balamori, says Linda. Let's see how many of our 100 said Balamori. Balamori is absolutely right. Well, 16 for Warmington on Sea. Balamori, 27. There we are. Interesting. Yes, feel mostly in Tobermory on the Isle of Mull. Miles Jupp, the comedian, obviously, is in Balamori. Yes. yes. There we are. Thank you very much indeed. Josh Lachlan, welcome to Point. Hello, it's great hello. to have you here. Tell us all about yourself, Lachlan. Um, so I am a paralegal um, working in dispute resolution and that's about it, to be honest. Do you know what? Because of paramedic, I yeah. just always think of paralegals also in green <laughs> boiler suits, usually running in yeah. pairs and turning up wherever they're required in that's the legal world. Is that roughly what it is? It, pretty much, yeah, except not as important, but yeah. You're very modest. That means it must be important. Um, <laughs> what do you do for fun, Lachlan? Um, I'm also a musician as well. Uh, so I play a bit of the ukulele. So mm. I kind of rap over the ukulele and try and, you know, do that in my spare time, do gigs. Ooh. That's an interesting thing to do. You rap mm. with the ukulele. How many other uko raps are there? Uko raps. I mean, you know, maybe I'm the first maybe pioneer. Maybe I'm the first. Trying to make it a bit of a bigger thing, but I haven't found too many people that have done when it. When you said maybe I'm the first a pioneer, I was hoping the next thing you're going to say was going to rhyme and scan. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, it, uh, I can't do it on demand like that. No, no. Gotta, well, gotta well the, that's what you've got to work towards, Lachlan. Yeah. That's how it is in the hard world of uke rap. <laughs> now then, what are you going to go for? Uh, I think I'm going to go for the bottom one. The hub of this London borough is the Queen Vic pub. I believe it's Wolford. Wolford, says Lachlan. Let's see how many of our 100 said Wolford. Wolford is absolutely right. Well, 27 is our high score, 16 is our low. 41 for Wolford, popular borough. Yeah, EastEnders. Fancy it? Mmm. What? Mmm. Bit of a part for you in EastEnders, do you well, think? Well, I don't know. I mean, they've asked me if I'd like to be Sonia's uh, love oh, interest. They, they said yeah, he's yeah. a bit of a, he, a mature nerd, I oh, think they said. Oh, right, OK, yeah, yeah. fair enough, fair that's enough, a, yeah. That's a gag from a few shows back there. Yeah, but the completists can enjoy that, can't they? Yes, that kind of callback. Cool yeah. yeah. It is a fact. Yeah. It is a fact. E20 is the postcode. Yes. And that didn't exist until the Olympics, when they now use it for the area the Olympics was in. Is E20? Yeah. That's nice. Out of a devotion to EastEnders? I or don't know, just yeah. Just by I wonder. I don't know whether Seb Coe was a huge fan of EastEnders. Mm. Or Boris Johnson. I wonder, maybe. He's in EastEnders, Boris Johnson. Oh, he's been in everything. Yeah, he's been in everything. He's been in everything. There we are. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Josh. Joe, welcome back to Point. It's great to have you here. We saw you in the head-to-head -head last time. Mm -hmm. They were terrific, Joe and Robin. They yes, incredibly really well. good. Stratospheric. Great um, start. Tell us more about yourself, Joe. Uh, yeah, so I'm also, uh, like Lachlan, a musician. I um, have been playing uh, guitar, bass and drums since I was a teenager and uh, used to be in a band and put out an album five years ago now. Heavens above, an album. How did your album perform, Joe? Um, it performed exactly how you would expect an independent album released in Perthshire and Scotland to do. Right. <laughs> Which of piano, bass and drums were you playing on it? Uh, All three? I was playing guitar and singing on it as well. OK. Very good. Now, Joe, look at this. This board is all yours. This is your time to shine. Would you like to talk us through the board? Um, not especially. Uh, I was feeling good about three of them, and they've all been taken. The only one I think I may know, but not 100% sure, is the top one, and I'm going to say Holby. Holby, says Joe. Shall we see how many of our 100 said Holby? Holby is right. 
Down goes Harvey to 55. Yes, home of casualty, mm. Holby City and Holby Blue. Mm. If you've got a good idea, just really rinse, rinse it. it. You've got to rinse it. Yeah. It's supposedly based on Bristol, Holby. Now Do you then. want me to take you through them? Yes, or? please. OK, but you know them all. Oh, I do, yes. OK, well, you will know, obviously, that M... Well, it's Midsummer. It's yes, Midsummer, 47, yes. And uh, there's lots of murders in Midsummer. And then we've got Fireman Sam was set in Ponty Pandy. Ponty Pandy. Which is worth yeah. 11 for the best answer on the board. This is Doc Martin. This is Doc Martin. And I think it's filmed in Port Isaac. I yes. can't remember what the name of the place is. Port Wen. Port Wen for Wen. seven. Oh, well. Thank you very much indeed. We are halfway through our first round. Let's have a quick look at those scores. 16, John. Very well done indeed. The best score of the past. We travel from 16 to 27, which is where we find Linda and Barry. From there to 41, where we find Lachlan and Woodrow. And from there up to 55, where we find Robin and Joe. Robin, you get the new board. Find a lovely low-scoring answer on that, and it will keep you in the game. Good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, let's put seven more clues to fictional British places in television up on the board, and here they are. We have Thomas the Tank Engine and his friends live on this island, S, the village that was home to Noel Edmonds and Mr Blobby, C.B. Ant McPartlin, Declan Donnelly and Jill Halfpenny have all played characters who have visited this youth club, B.G. This village is the setting for a Welsh-language soap opera with a title that translates as People of the Valley. C, the Manchester-based town where Coronation Street is located, W, the League of Gentlemen focuses heavily on activities in this northern town, R, V, and the Yorkshire Village, which has been home to the Sugdens, the Dingles and the Bartons, and features home farm, E. There we are. Robin, welcome back to Point. It's great to have you here. Tell us more about yourself, Robin. Hi, I'm Robin. I'm from Glasgow and work in Edinburgh. And in my spare time, I'm an avid cook and I love to run. Um, Joe and I have done the Edinburgh Half Marathon together and I've done the Barcelona Half Marathon as well. Very good. You're on the half marathon circuit. Are you ever tempted by the whole full marathon? Definitely tempted, but not ready yet. <laughs> not ready yet, but it's um, on the agenda. The, the, the plan agenda. is to work up towards it. How many half marathons do you have to do before you start thinking, no, actually, I really am. I am ready. Oh, I think uh, maybe I'll be ready in a couple of years. So good. at a rate of a couple, three a year, five, six. Fantastic. Well, I'm very impressed. Uh, now, Robin, you are the high scorers at the moment. You have a lovely fresh board here to try and find a low score. What would you like to go for? Uh, this isn't... Joe's strength, I know. It's not my strength either. Uh, I think I'm going to have to go with the most obvious answer on the board, unfortunately, the Yorkshire village, Emmerdale. Emmerdale for the bottom one. Let's see how many of our 100 said Emmerdale. No red line for you as you are the high scores at the moment, Robin. Emmerdale is right. 70 for Emmerdale takes your total up to 125. 70 for Emmerdale. It used to be filmed on location in the Yorkshire village of Esholt, but it's now filmed on a set that is a replica of the village. Famously, sadly, Emmerdale was hit by a plane, wasn't it? I don't know if you've seen yeah, that episode. I haven't seen that episode, but I, I did gather. Yeah, it was hit by a plane because they needed to write out a lot of characters all in one go. Yeah, yeah. And also, they teamed up with that. That plane is from a soap opera um, over in Australia. Yes. And uh, <laughs> they also needed to wipe out some exactly. characters. So they've done easy. a deal, you know. Yeah. Yeah, there we are. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, now then, Woodrow. Welcome to Point. It's great to have thank you, you here. Thank you. Um, tell us all about yourself, Woodrow. Uh, so I'm a solicitor uh, specialising in uh, contested trusts and estates. Contested trusts. I'm so glad because I've got so much to ask you about that. Um, <laughs> we'll do that after the round. But yes, um, yes um, what did you do for fun, Woodrow? Uh, I play golf as my as my my best hobby. I think your yeah. best hobby. Yeah. Not very I, well, I may add. I look forward to hearing your worst hobby. Yeah. But yes, your best hobby. So, I mean, did you play off a, a terrific handicap? My handicap is about seventeen. But, okay, uh, it's got oh, a lot worse so, in, that's, in recent years. It's not bad, good not slash bad. bad, not bad, not or, bad. Or, okay, good. Uh, Woodrow, you are on forty-one. 83 or less gets you into the next round. These are all fictional places seen on British TV, but where are they? I mean, I don't know any on this board, so... <gasps> this um, is music to the ears of Robin and Joe. Yeah, so I'm going to have to go with a guess on the village that was the home to Noel Edmonds and Mr Blobby as CBeebies. 
C, well, listen, C, B, C, B, B's. Here's your red line. Like, that's relevant. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what happens when we say C, B, B's. Oh, I'm sorry. That scores you 100 points. That takes your total up to 141. I'm so sorry, Woodrow. We'll find out what it was at the end of the round. Thank you very much indeed. Now then, Barry, welcome to Point. This is terrific to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. I'm retired. I, I'm a retired accountant, actually. And uh, I left on the day I did 50 years. Very good. The exact, on the very day? On the very day. By design or by coincidence? Uh, by design. By design. I could have retired just before that, but uh, I, I was awkward and decided 50 years is the day. That's the one. And they had to make a special long service pin for me because they've never, ever had it done before. <laughs> oh, well, that's yeah. fantastic. Good for you. And you loving retirement, Barry. Oh, yes, I travel oh, a lot. Lovely. With my wife, obviously. Very nice. Been to a lot of different countries, so, yeah. yes. Shaking sticks at penguins, don't do it. <laughs> I said don't do it. <laughs> Playing with blue are. foot boobies in the Galapagos. Blue-footed uh, boobies. Some of my favourite birds, yes. Where they are. There we are. Now, Barry, you are on 27. You are through to the next round. Even if you scored 100, you'd be through to well, the next round. Well, I'm glad of that. What would you like to go for? Uh, not a uh, good subject for me. I try the Thomas the Tank Engine, Sodor. Sodor, says Barry. For Thomas the Tank Engine, no red line for you. You're already through. Sodor is absolutely right. Very well done, Barry. <laughs> and down it takes up to 14. Oh. This is a terrific <laughs> answer, taking your total That's up right. to 41. Yes, yeah, Sodor, which is a fictional island uh, between Barrow and Furnace and the Isle of Man, if it was real. If it was real. It does sound like something from Lord of the Rings, It does doesn't it? sound like something from Lord of the and Rings. And not a nice place. Sodor. Yeah, I never knew where Thomas the Tank Engine was set, and mm. I didn't even realise it was on an island. I didn't, I didn't, well, I knew it was on an island. I didn't realise it was so close to the Isle of Man. I didn't realise it was there. Anyway, yeah. thank you very much indeed. Uh, now then, Stacey, welcome back. We discovered before the show started that Stacey is actually from Northumberland. Yes. Not from East London, as well, we thought. Well, I, I live in East London with John, unfortunately. Well, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. But you still dream. Your heart is still in Northumberland. It is, you know, uh, no air pollution. <laughs> yeah. Morpeth, she's from. I know, I know. Isn't that lovely? Um, Stacey, tell us more about yourself. So, um, I, were, I well, lived in Northumberland, came down here for university, and then I just never kind of left and mm. haven't gone back since. Mm. Um, I like to travel a lot, hence why I left the countryside. Um, me and John actually got married in Vegas as Ooh. part of our travelling adventures, yes. Yeah. Was that planned or was it a spur-of-the-moment thing? Um, a bit of both. Um, yeah. We initially wanted to elope anyway, but our families were arguing about going on holiday with each other. Um, so we uh, just went and did it. <laughs> Much less fuss. Definitely. There we are. Brilliant. Now, Stacey, I mean, you are through. I mean, you were through anyway from the very beginning of this pass, but you're on 16, so it doesn't matter what you score. Would you like to fill in the board for us? Um, I only know two on the board. Um, my dad would be very disappointed that I don't know the League of Gentlemen. Um, <laughs> but the other one I know is the Manchester-based town, but that's not the one I'm going to go for. I think that's uh, Weatherfield. Um, but I would like to go for Biker Grove as Anne McPartland. Of course, why wouldn't I go for that one? In the northeast, Biker Absolutely. Grove. Let's see how many of our 100 said Biker Grove. No red line for you for the lovely reason you are already through. Biker Grove, absolutely right. And down he goes, 49. That says a lot about the demographic of our 100. I mean, in the same way that uh, Balamori also is quite a mm. high score there. Biker Grove scoring 49, taking your total up to 65. Biker is a real place in Newcastle, is, but yeah. Biker Grove, the youth club, is fictional. Uh, Weatherfield, you are correct, is the Manchester-based town. That was two less, actually, unbelievably. What? Yeah, I know. I, I can't believe it either. <laughs> the British public, eh? 47, which leaves three. It wasn't CBeebies. No, it was, it was Crinkly Bottom. Crinkly Bottom mm. for 21. That's quite a, an out-there joke for the 90s. Yeah, it was quite... Yeah, it was a you different know, time. Different you know, time. Crinkly wasn't bottom. It? <laughs> yeah. And then the League of Gentlemen. Royston Vasey. Royston Vasey, which was 15. Do you know what Royston Vasey comes from? It's the real name of Roy Chubby Brown. Oh, Roy Chubby Brown. Yes. That's right. And this is a pointless answer, this Welsh village, which is Cumderi, which is a pointless answer. Thank you very much indeed. That brings us to the end of our first round. It also means we have to say goodbye to our first pair, Woodrow and Lachlan. I'm sure you'll go much further next time, but for the meantime, thank you very much for playing Woodrow and Lachlan. Terrific. 
Uh, for the remaining three pairs, though, it's now time for round two. Well done, everybody. We've made it through our fictional TV location round. That's just terrific. Linda and Barry, very well done indeed. Our lowest combined scorers. Barry, our lowest individual scorer. So fantastic work there on the middle podium. Best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two today is spelling alphabets. Spelling alphabets. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many consonants in the NATO phonetic alphabet as they could, Josh. Uh, so, we're looking for words used to represent any consonant in the NATO phonetic alphabet. For the purposes of this question, by consonant, we mean any letter other than the vowels A, E, I, O, U, or Alpha, Echo, India, Oscar and Uniform. So that is any word in the NATO phonetic alphabet that represents a consonant. Wait, just before you said uniform in my head, I was going, umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> I've just... never heard uniform before. Yeah, uniform. Yeah. Well, I'll remember that. Yeah. Not umbrella. Oh. Uniform. Uh, Stacey, you're going to go first. OK, so I would like to go for uh, Zulu. Zulu. Says Stacy. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Zulu. Zulu is right. That's a terrific answer. 11. Very well done indeed, Stacy. Setting the bar high or low, whichever way it goes. And 11 is one of the 11 official languages of South Africa. There you go. Beautiful. Um, Linda. Uh, whiskey. I will go for whiskey. Whiskey. Go for whiskey, says Linda. I should. Let's see how many of our 100 said whiskey. Whiskey is right. Well, 11 for Zulu. 17 for whiskey. Very well done. Yes, the NATO website lists whiskey as having an E in the word, yeah. meaning it isn't Scotch. It isn't exactly. A whiskey made outside Scotland. Yeah. There we are. Thank you. Now then, Robin. I think I'm going to go for Juno for J. Juno, says Robin, helpfully adding for J. Let's see how many of our 100 said Juno. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer. 100 points. Sorry, Robin. I, th I thought it was right as well, mm. but it mm. wasn't. Well, let's uh, go through the scores as we're halfway through the round. 11 was the best score of the past. Stacey and John, very well done indeed. 17 is where we're behind Linda and Barry. I'm so sorry, Robin and Joe, you're up there on 100. Joe, let's have a lovely low scoring answer <laughs> from you. You never know, it could help. Um, we're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? So there we are, Joe. We are looking for consonants in the NATO phonetic alphabet. I'm afraid you're on 100. OK. Um, I'm going to go for kilo. Kilo, says Joe. Shall we see how many of our 100 people said Kilo? There's no red line view as you are the high scorers. Kilo is right. 36 for Kilo. Taking your total up to 136. 36 comes from the Greek word for thousand. Mm, there we are. Thank you very much. Now, Barry, you're on 17. You're into the head-to-head, -head, whatever you score. But a lovely low score might make you the golden couple. <laughs> I'll go Victor. Victor, says Barry. No red line for the lovely reason I just mentioned. Victor. Victor is right. Oh, it's a good one. Down he goes to 14. Very well done. Taking your total up to 31. That's a good one. Victor Meldrew is the most famous Victor, in my opinion. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Victor Probably. Mature. I never knew who Victor Mature was. Who is Victor, Who is Victor Mature? Mature? He's a film star. Oh, he's a film star. Film star. Victor there Mature. Go. There you are. There we go. Thank you very much indeed. Now then, John, again, you're through. Lovely low score from Stacey in the first pass. What are you going to go for? Let's have a low score all I'm the same. I'm going to take on Robin's word and Juliet. Juliet, says John. Let's see how many of our 100 said Juliet. There's no red line for you either because you're through. Juliet is right. 
That goes down to 36, taking your total up to 47. Yeah. Spelt with two Ts, uh, for the reason of French people might think that the T was silent if there wasn't two Juliet. Ts. Yeah. So Juliet. Yes. Juliet, and obviously Juliet Bravo that, for there we anyone go. who grew up in the 80s. And Bravo itself was a, a score of 63. Yeah, yeah. The second highest answer, the highest being Delta, 75. Uh, Why for Yankee is one of the three that scored 14, along with Quebec for Q and Victor, which Barry already said. Zulu was the best answer on the board, so well done. Stacey. Isn't she brilliant? There we go. Uh, thank you very much. Well, we're at the end of our second round, which means we have to say goodbye to another pair. Oh, Joe and Robin. Head to head last time. High scores in round two. <laughs> next time. Next time. Sure. We'll save it all for next time. We'll look forward to that. Joe and Robin, thank you so much for playing. For the remaining two pairs, though, it is now time for the head to head. Congratulations, Linda and Barry, Stacey and John. You are one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £1,000. But here in this little bonus round is where we can throw some more money into that jackpot. Let's just have a quick try at these pointless answers. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many European waters as they could. Josh. OK, you're going to see six options. Four are the names of bodies of water in Europe, two of which are scoring, two are pointless, and two are not European waters. £250 in the jackpot for each pointless answer. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, so let's reveal the potential pointless European waters, and here we go. Alboran Sea, Wise Bay, Pentland Firth, Bosphorus, Schweeney Bay and Sea of Dawn. Kind of um, if anyone knows oh, anything, it? speak oh. up. Well, I think Pen and Firth and Bosphorus are. are. Dawn is from Game, Game of Thrones, we think. What is? Dawn, the Sea of Dawn. Oh, is it? We well, think it's from that. Game of Thrones, so we so think that's, that's the red herring. Yeah. yeah. And what did you say with the three that I you think? I think Pen and Firth and Bosphorus are, so therefore, if I know them, they must probably score <laughs> points. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so, Linda and Barry, what are you going to go for? Airborne and Sea. Yeah, come on. Go on, then. Alboran Sea. Alboran, I think Alboran. it is. The Alboran Sea. Should we find out if the Alboran Sea is a pointless uh, piece of water? <laughs> Alboran, you are absolutely right, is a piece of water in Europe, and it's a pointless <laughs> answer. <laughs> Very well done indeed. Okay, Stacy and John. I'm going to let you pick. Ah, okay. Uh, we'll go for Pentland Firth. OK, you're flying in the face of Barry's wonderful advice, <laughs> which was not to go for Pentland Firth or Bosphorus, but you're going to go for Pentland Firth. Let's see if that was a wise thing to do. Pentland Firth is indeed a piece of European water. And as Barry said, it's not a pointless piece of water because people have heard it. That one person was Barry. Yeah. <laughs> That's the worst thing about it. Uh, so that was correct. He was also right about Bosphorus, which was also one point. It was you, wasn't it, Barry? Yeah. Um, and then you are right that the Sea of Dawn is from Game of Thrones. So that is an incorrect answer. So that leaves a pointless and a incorrect answer. Um, Schweeney Bay has to be, has to be the pointless answer. It is. It's in Malta. And Wise Bay is a reference to Morecambe Bay, which is nice. in northwest England. There we are. Thank you very much indeed, Josh. And well done. You managed to find one pointless answer, which means we can add £250 to the jackpot. And it now stands at £1,250. But who will be playing for it? Well, let's find out in the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> now, the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. And you are now allowed to confer before you give your answers. Best of luck to both pairs. Here is our first question, and it concerns... Horny animals. Josh, Crinkly Bottom crinkly and now bottom. Horny Animals. I mean, <laughs> really. I hope the children are in bed. We're going to show you five pictures of animals that have true horns in the zoological sense, unbranched structures that never shed and consist of a core of bone surrounded by a layer of horn. The antlers of deer are not true horns, nor are the horns of a rhinoceros. We'll give you alternating letters for their names, Please give us the most obscure horned animal. Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five horned animals, and here they come. We have A, J, C, B, S, E, P. 
B. F U H R E A T L P. C. G E T R K D. D. A R C N B F A O. And E. A P N I E. There we are. Linda and Barry will go first. Feel free to confer. Yeah. We'll go for A, Jacob Sheep. Jacob Sheep, say Linda and Barry. Now, Stacey and John, can you talk us through that board? Not really. <laughs> uh, Any ideas? I thought you said D. Um, yeah. What did you say? That's African buffalo. And we thought E, we can't work out what the animal is, but we think the first bit is alpine. Um, we're going to have to go with D, I think, African buffalo. OK, you're going to go D, African buffalo. So we have Jacob Sheep and African buffalo. Linda and Barry went for Jacob Sheep for A. Let's see how many of our 100 said that. Jacob Sheep is right. And it stops on 39. <laughs> Meanwhile, Stacey and John have gone for African buffalo for D. Let's see how many of our 100 said African buffalo. African Buffalo is right. 49 for African Buffalo. Well done. Linda and Barry, after one question, you're up 1-0. Tough one, that, wasn't it? It is Very a tough, tough one. Yeah, they were two highest scoring answers on the board. So, E is the next highest scoring. Alpine Ibex. Correct, for 15 points. Mm. And then... Should we go the... for C? C is pointless. Oh, it's a greater kudu. It is a greater oh. kudu. Wow. Look at that. Look at those beautiful horns. But can you close it out with a... This is worth two points. Well, OK. Well, it's an antelope. It's a horned antelope. I want to say four-horned. It is four-horned, because there are four of them. Four-horned antelope. There we go. For two points. There nice. we go. That was wonderful to watch. Look at that. That's terrifying. I mean, sweet-looking creature, but those horns. Yeah. Right, here comes your second question, Stacey and John. You get to answer it first, but you've got to win this one to stay in the game, so good luck. Our second question is all about... Answers that contain the word no. Josh. Yes, we're going to show you five clues to things which all contain the letters N and O together in that order, somewhere in their names. We'd like you to give us the answer the fewest of our hundred people knew. Thank you very much indeed. So, let's reveal our five clues to answers that contain the word no. Charlie Brown's dog, who made his first appearance in the Peanuts cartoon strip in 1950. S. Name that can be given to the art or study of bell ringing. C. Jenny Jones won Great Britain's first Olympic medal in this sport in 2014. S. Futuristic 2002 film starring Tom Cruise about a special police unit that is able to arrest murderers before they commit their crimes. M. R. And name given to the way of displaying or writing about events in the order in which they happened. C. There we are. Stacey and John will go first. John's really put the pressure on me because we know a few of these. <laughs> <laughs> and he's told me I have to decide. <laughs> so. Um, it's only fair. Yeah. <laughs> oh. You shot No. No? Okay. Okay, so we're going to go with the uh, Tom Cruise film, uh, Minority Report. Minority Report, say Stacey and John for the Tom Cruise film. Now, Linda and Barry, can you talk us through that board? Um. Well, Charlie Brown's dog was Snoopy. The name of the art of bell ringing is Campanology. I don't know the next one. And the last one is Chronological. So we're going to go for... Bell ringing. Yeah, the bell ring, Campanology. You're going to go for Campanology. So we have Minority Report and we have Campanology. Stacey and John went for Minority Report for the Tom Cruise film. Let's see how many of our 100 said that. Minority Report, absolutely right, with its N-O there. And down that goes a great score, down to 19. Very well done indeed, Minority Report. Linda and Barry, meanwhile, have gone for the art of bell ringing. Uh, Campanology, how many of our 100 said that? Campanology, absolutely right. It's got to beat 19, and it does, look at that. Down goes Campanology <laughs> to 10. Very well done indeed, Linda and Barry. After only two questions, you're straight through to the final 2-0.
Well done. Was Campanology one of the ones you knew? No. no. Oh, then <laughs> don't, don't worry about that then. Uh, Campanology was not the lowest score. We'll come to that. But uh, Snoopy, you were correct in saying, is uh, 61. Chronological, you were correct in saying, which is 46. And then the lowest scoring on the board was Jenny Snowboarding. Jones. Snowboarding. Snowboarding, oh, five. Oh. There we are. Did you have that? Mm. Yeah, and he, he was arguing with me. Well, <laughs> there we are. The pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round. Stacey and John, you've still got a game in hand. We can make it count next time, but it's been lovely having you on the show. Thank you so much, Stacey and John. For Linda and Barry, though, now time for the pointless final. Well, a huge congratulations, Linda and Barry. You've fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now get the chance to win the pointless jackpot, and at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £1,250. Well, I mean, you've been terrific. We've had low score after low score from you. You've been lowest individual scorer, lowest combined scorers, 2 0 in the head to head. I'd love to see you leave with that jackpot, though. Um, what do you want to see come up? Ooh, bit of sport hub for me. Literature ish, geography ish. Geography ish. OK, well, let's see what we can offer you. Four things as ever. And they are Belgian jazz and pop, fictional abbeys, 17th century English poems, and gymnastics at the Olympic Games since 2000. A bit of poems for What you. do we think? I think I'll get my coat now. <laughs> <laughs> um, fictional abbeys? Don't know. Yeah, what a I poem wouldn't... for you. Not 17th century. No. Well, it's fictional abbeys, yeah, not really. Fictional abbeys it is, fictional then. Fictional abbeys mm. it is. That's been around for quite a long time, so thank you. <laughs> I can imagine. Oh, it's a, it's a relief. We are looking for the name of anyone who received an acting credit in the 2022 film Downton Abbey, A New Era. This is according to the IMDb website of May 2023. Or we are looking for any named character in the 2007 TV film Northanger Abbey, which was adapted by Andrew Davis. We are looking for the characters' names as they appear on IMDb and who are played by anyone with an acting credit in that TV film. This is as of May 2023. Very best of luck in the studio and good luck to you at home. Thank you very much indeed. Now, as always, you've got up to one minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot is for just one of those answers to be pointless. If you can find three pointless answers, we'll throw in a £500 bonus. Are you ready? No. <laughs> <laughs> Even so, I'm yeah. going to put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. Well, oh, obviously... Michelle Doherty. Michelle Doherty. Who played... Hugh, Hugh Bonneville, Maggie Smith. Oh, Maggie Smith, yeah. Um, <laughs> Who played the, the butler? Oh. Carson. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, John... No. Um... <sighs> <laughs> yeah. Um... No, it's gone. Yeah. Carson, he was in The Littlest Vampire. Yeah. Um, no. I don't know Northanger Abbey at all. No, nor do I. Exactly. Um, so we'll have to just go for those three. Yeah. It won't be pointless. Yeah. I can't think of anyone else at, no. at the moment. Yeah, we're all right. OK, yeah. shall we stop the clock? Yeah. Oh, OK, I'm sorry. That's, <laughs> uh, you're not having as much fun with that as you might have had. No. Um, let's have your three answers. Go on, then. Um, Michelle Doherty. Michelle Doherty. Hugh Bonneville. Who Bonneville? Hugh Maggie. Bonneville. Maggie Smith. Maggie yeah. Smith. OK, of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? Michelle Doherty. OK, Michelle Doherty, we're going to put yeah. last. Least likely to be pointless? Um, Hugh Bonneville. Hugh Bonneville, and then Maggie Smith yeah. goes in the middle. Let's put those answers up on the board in that order, then, and here they are. Hugh Bonneville, Maggie Smith, Michelle Doherty. Well, if one of these turns out to be pointless, you never know. Um, you'll be leaving here with £1,250. Um, what would you like to do with that, Linda? Well, we've promised to take the children and the grandchildren for a short break at... Um, Warwick Castle, so Lovely. we'll put it towards that. That would be very nice. Barry, anything you want to add well, to that? Uh, yeah. 
No, I mean, you can't really. Well, this you is can't it. say, well, I'd be... Not I'd be... a lot of choice. <laughs> there we are. Uh, OK, um, Hugh Bonneville was your first answer. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Hugh Bonneville. In all three cases, we are looking for the cast of the 2022 film, Downton Abbey, A New Era. How many said Hugh Bonneville? The wonderful Hugh Bonneville. He's correct. Is he going to be pointless? <laughs> well, down he goes through the teens. Oh, ten yeah. for Hugh Bonneville. Yes, I thought. There we are. Exactly. Good <laughs> of Hugh. Not pointless, therefore. So we now turn to Maggie Smith. Shall we see how many of our 100 people said Maggie Smith? For £1,250, might Maggie Smith be pointless? Maggie Smith is right. Well, Hugh Bonneville took us down to ten. Maggie Smith, the other great star of Downton Abbey, <laughs> taking us down through the 20s. Uh, there we are, 20. There we are. Well, they're sticking to the, to the big round numbers there. Yeah. Also not pointless. So we now turn to Michelle Doherty, which is the third answer you gave, the one you thought was your best shot at a pointless answer. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Michelle Doherty. No, I'm oh, so what? sorry. I'm afraid that is an incorrect answer, yeah. therefore not a pointless answer. I'm so sorry, Linda and Barry, you haven't won our jackpot today, but let's not be downhearted about that because you have won our pointless trophies. We have So indeed. very well done for that and yeah. richly, richly deserved. You've been absolutely fantastic right across the show and it's been lovely having you on, Linda and Barry. Thank you. Uh, it wasn't Michelle Doherty, it was Michelle Dockery. Dockery. Oh, oh yeah. but she'd have scored three, so don't panic, yeah. don't panic. <laughs> And the one you were trying to remember, Carson the Butler, was Jim Carter, Jim Carter yeah. scored one. Oh. So oh, it would have absolutely. just been more painful. It would have yeah. just been more painful. Zander, did you have an answer? Oh, I have. The mighty Alan Leach. Alan Leach? Yes. He's got to be in there. And he is pointless. Oh. There you go. Yeah. There so you get the jackpot. Well done. I got the jackpot. You get the jackpot. Oh, brilliant. Shall we have a look at some pointless answers of people you might recognise from Downton Abbey, A New Era? We've got Brendan Coyle. Elizabeth McGovern, Imelda Staunton, Laura Carmichael. Imelda Staunton married to Jim Carter. Jim Carter. Yeah. We knew that. <laughs> <laughs> and the scoring answers, Maggie Smith, Hugh Bonneville, Michelle Dockery, Eva Sams, Penelope Wilton, Joanne Frogger and Jim Carter. There we are. And shall we have a look at the other Abbey, Northanger, from 2007. We've got Captain Frederick Tilney, Catherine Morland, Eleanor Tilney, Isabella Thorpe. And only scoring answers were James Morland, John Thorpe, Henry Tilney and Anne Thorpe. There we are. Thank you very much indeed. Josh, I'm so sorry, Linda and Barry, you didn't win our jackpot today. That will therefore roll over onto the next show when we will be playing for £2,250. <laughs> Join us then to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Josh. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.